all right okay uh, good evening everybody and a uh, very hearty welcome to the webinar today from school of inspired leadership uh, i dr neetika batra along with my colleague uh, professor gurveer jaswal both of us are here to host you for the next uh, one hour and uh, we will talk a little bit about what the program is all about the one year program specifically on offer and uh, who can take that and what are some of the benefits you can derive from there uh, so my name is like i said dr nitika batra i'm the dean and uh, professor of finance at uh, the school i've been uh, working with the school for almost a decade now uh, and the primary reason for that is the fact that we do a lot of innovative things here and meaningful things which i feel is uh, is very very required for the world of education you know something that i really wish are incorporated at the school level also uh, but uh, better late than never as i say so somebody has to make that first step and i'm so glad that soil did that uh, and uh, therefore you know the leadership journey that we talk about which is more holistic than just the management journey is adding a lot of value to many lives and uh, i think uh, many many alumni more than about 1200 alumni have benefited from this uh, leadership journey in the past uh, 13 years since the school has been uh, there and um, as for myself i am from uh, i'm basically a finance professional uh, a masters and a phd in finance and uh, have worked in the investment banking arena for almost a decade and then an investment banking boutique firm and academics for the last uh, 16 years so that's broadly where i come from uh, maybe gurveer you can introduce yourselves now so sure, thank you uh, nitika uh, so good evening everyone uh, my name is gurveer singh jaswal i am the associate dean and i head the admissions so uh, i come from an industry background unlike dr nitika who has an, who's got a mix of both academics and uh, uh industry mine is more of an industry background i have what 20 years of experience in uh, bfsi in india so i worked across icici bank uh, i worked with standard chartered i worked with idbi uh, most of these banks on the retail banking arm which where i worked uh, for 13 years i was working with kotak uh, kotak securities and ultimately in my last assignment i was a business head there uh, before i joined soil uh, so what excites me about you know soil as uh, you know is that we always coming up with new innovative ways you know design thinking is one of our you know uh, pioneering teaching approaches that we use social innovation projects and i'm sure we'll talk about this as we go along but you know the the excitement is that the newness of everything that we're doing you know the constant you know uh, need to come up with something new the desire and the hunger i think that keeps the level of motivation very high for all of us for not only for us as faculty but even for the students per se you know because they're always doing something new and we uh, you know as faculty members just look at an to create a environment where we can facilitate that so that's my brief introduction and uh, without further delay let's begin uh, so why don't we start with you dr nitika then maybe i can take over sure sure thank you uh so the one year program as some of you would have already researched a bit on it is a uh, is probably you know a very popular trend uh, over the last few years across the globe now uh and especially for people with some work experience because it was noticed that uh, you know people who have work experience have already seen the corporate life and the corporate sector for a few years so uh, education is not just about what we do in classrooms it's also when we work and we observe the world around us and we imbibe a few things from there so when people are working in their domains it's not that they are restricted to that so they are also observing what the marketing team is doing what the hr people are doing what kind of corporate actions their companies are taking you know whether it is uh, by declaring dividends or launching an ipo or you know uh, doing some other uh, mergers and acquisitions or some other corporate event that is going on in the company and therefore uh, they tend to learn a lot Uh, through that uh, work experience uh, however uh, 
you know, all this learning has to put in a more structured format and has to be explained logically through some concepts, models, frameworks, and uh, has to be brought in together. And that is where the MBA education comes in and uh, helps people connect the dots. So uh, these people do not really require an elongated two-year period to start from the scratch. Unlike the freshers who just passed out of college and have no experience of the corporate world, uh, you know, they, the, the people with work experience can pick up the knowledge of uh, MBA courses uh, in a shorter time frame. Uh, the freshers need a more uh, leisurely pace of learning. They need some internships, corporate exposure, and the other things to supplement that learning. And therefore, the two-year is better model for them. Uh, but for people with prior experience, uh, like I said, uh, they are able to uh, complete their learning of MBA within one, one year because they're also leveraging on their corporate experience and the learnings there from of the management and the business of the last three or four years that they worked in the sector. So that is uh, one benefit. And secondly, uh, what we see is that uh, the curriculum of a one year is uh, uh, almost equal, if not more than that of a two year program. So we don't compromise on the uh, number of the courses and the number of the hours. Uh, in fact, it's slightly more. Uh, and um, you know, we get a little greedy to say, okay, ye bhi kara dete hain, wo bhi types, you know, so let them not go without uh, that part of the learning. Uh, so uh, with, given that format in one year, uh, the pace becomes a little fast and the pressure is a little high. And therefore, you know, uh, we feel that people with prior work experience can take that kind of rigor much better because they've worked in the corporate life. And so they're used to a certain rhythm and a certain, certain pressure. Uh, having said that, uh, we also try to make learning a lot of fun. We realize that, you know, uh, learning cannot happen under pressure. Uh, so we try to make it a lot of fun and we try to kind of uh, mix and match uh, learning inside the classroom with a lot of events outside the classroom and a lot of activities outside that. Uh, so, so that students are learning and still not, uh, you know, getting uh, bored and uh, monotonous about that pattern of learning within the one year. So uh, it's very smartly mixed with a lot of um, activities uh, and the pedagogical, you know, in innovations are something that we keep experimenting with so that uh, learning is passed on effectively uh, to the students within that one year time frame. So um, I think that's the broad format. Uh, of a one-year program and therefore what we look for in the students is uh, one basically of course uh, the management acumen or the you know, business acumen the ability to understand management and have that passion and uh, secondly be able to work hard and have the rigor to follow in that one-year program and what I always say is most important is the attitude so when we say of talk about our you know, vision of uh, creating inspired leaders with the uh, competence, character, and enthusiasm, uh, we rate character as the supreme. Because, you know, if you have sincerity and you have honesty and you have the ability to put in hard work and you have that fire to make it work, uh, I'm sure nothing can stop you. I mean, whatever be the IQ levels, whatever be your past background, etc. Uh, I have personally seen in the past these kind of people have always excelled and therefore we rate that part uh, way above anything else uh, we have our own uh, in-house psychometric uh, analysis tool uh, which we use to assess the personality of the student and that's not like a test test kind of a thing to eliminate anybody it is more to understand the person's personality and see whether that is a fitment to our model and how we can develop the person over uh, the one year journey here in soil. So it's more like a developmental tool. And therefore, you know, the student is relieved of uh, having to clear an entrance exam, like an NMAT, GMAT, or CAT, or anything, and prepare for that well in advance, et cetera. Uh, if, he's, if he or she has done that, it's obviously a welcome thing. Uh, but if it's not done, then it's not a deterrent for us. 
uh, thankfully, uh, not being uh, under the AICT umbrella is a blessing for us in many ways that we have a lot of flexibility in our admission and our curriculum design and many other things. So we are able to keep pace with a lot of new trends and new thinking uh, because of this. So uh, I think that in brief is what I would like to uh, talk about and in the opening and maybe uh, later on, if you have questions, I will uh, address them also and uh, try to cover more areas through those. So right now I, I'll open the floor for Gurvi to express his thoughts. Uh, thank you, Nitika. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'll just add on to what uh, Nitika just said. You know, when you start an MBA in India, when you think the first thing is that most of you would have done a graduation. In fact, more, every one of you. So the it's either a, you know on a graduation, a BSc, BCom, or a BA. Some of you have a more professional background of an engineering. Now, what happens in in all of these courses? The focus is more on academics, you know, so you are focusing more on academics and it is just, you know, you have the lecture model of teaching where there's information transfer. Now, in the case of freshers, when they come straight away here, we need two years because we need to shift them from this learning model to a model of absorbing knowledge, you know, because the MBA curriculum differs a lot from your graduation curriculum. So you need two years to create, uh, you know, that pace and that environment for them to learn. Now, in your case, when you're experienced professionals, a lot of that learning has happened on your job, you know. So you've come from a non, you know, from an academic background of doing like in engineering, where you may have learned more about theory, but when you get into the job, you've learned a lot of practical aspects about business aspects, about your what type of personality you need. So your base is already there. That is why the core for experienced people, the course is more of a one-year course because the foundation has been laid in your job. So your working environment helps you mold in a certain manner, your personality, your understanding of things. While for freshers, that needs to be done in the MBA curriculum because they are coming straight out of graduation. And let me tell you, there's a paradigm shift between what is taught in graduation and what is taught in MBA. The goals of both are different. You know, In MBA, we are not going to just going to come to a classroom and give you a lecture at soil. You know? The idea here is when you're talking of case studies here, so you and the faculty together are creating knowledge together. That's how you, through a discussion, that is what you're doing. So in your case, if you're experienced, you already have the foundation laid in your job. What we want, we want to build on it and fine tune it. That is why a you know, one-year program is preferred for people who already have workings. So you are in the right direction. We are just going to hasten that process and you know further guide you in that. That's the first most important thing. So that's why generally you will find a two-year program. I'm sure you mean you're free to join it, but the value addition that you will see in a one-year program is much more. Because the first year is core foundation. And mind you, like what Dr. Nitika said, the learning is the same. There is no compromise in the learning. It is the pace is very fast. And you as experienced professionals will enjoy because many of you have worked you know, in IT, in BFSI, where your project deadlines. So the pace of learning is very fast. It's not that in the one-year program, there is any less learning or the subject matter taught is less. The subject matter and the learning is at par with any other MBA course or any other MBA curriculum. You know? So there is no drawback or there is no shortfall of learning. It is just that because you have experience, we increase the pace of learning for you because we know you have the foundation. You know? You are already ready for two, for freshers in two years. We begin slowly. We start with core courses, you know, and then we begin develop their personality. And in the second year, come on to electives. But in your case, the same learning happens at a much faster pace. So that's why a one-year program is advisable. Ultimately, I believe it is your choice, but it is advisable because you already have the background and aptitude. You know, secondly, it also makes very fine. You know, it makes very sense. You know, you have you've come with a work X, and after an MBA, you again want to build and go into a work X. So why waste two years when you can do it in one year when you for something which you're already ready to do it in a year? You know, so it saves time. You know, and time is money, which is but obvious. You know, because a one year that you save here is one year extra that you go to job early, and that is the extra amount of benefit you get not only in financial benefit, even in terms of your work ex. You know, so imagine so you join earlier back, you get earlier work ex, you will get promoted earlier compared to a guy who's doing two years. So you have a head start of one year. You know. So it's a big important in terms of time management, in terms of you know financial resources, it makes a lot of sense for you. You know, a lot of you are here because, not because you don't know many things. You know, a lot of you come here because you want a career change. You know, many of you have started working after graduation, you know, 
and when you start working many of you then absorb and realize that maybe my true calling could be in something else you want to do something else you find an aptitude you find an interest in that but then you realize you don't have the skill set so you don't have a gateway to get into that stuff. so a lot of people who come in a one year program are looking for career change looking for industry change a lot of people who are working you know in it and analytics realize that maybe hr is my where learning and development is where you know my true calling is so one year program guides you in that right direction along with the skill set so career change is very important for all of you who are in the one year program because you know as you realize where you're calling that is very important that is where the one year program guides you we at soil journal have been very good in that you know we have a mentorship session we have internal external mentors you know we have a, a first a core foundation where you go through everything and you can understand the nuances of various subjects and then you get into electives so the electives are described in such a manner that you can choose you know today it's not about knowledge it's about skill set so you may be working in analytics in deloitte but you could be working on a financial risk advisory job the skill set you need is of analytics financial analytics and of risk advisory so today jobs are being classified in skill sets so that is what we are also working in terms of our electives the focus of our electives is that what is the career that you want now and what is the skill set that you want you choose your electives accordingly that's another very important aspect of the one year program you know so you come with a core curriculum you get the basic see core curriculum is very important for a short period because there are some of you may be engineers you have very limited exposure to accounting and economics people who come from accountings where have very little exposure to maybe on a subject which is analytics you know something like python so it's important that we get you all on the same page in the first couple of months and then we move on to the the electives and that helps build your program right we have international tie ups you know it's very important you know that as you people are executives that you get exposure to international tie ups because the world is becoming globalized so we have a tie up with shizuken university uh, many of our students did a global strategy course with them you know that so you can imagine we were our students were part of their class unfortunately this time because it was an online class we could do it through zoom but our students were in the class with their students their professors learning they are currently doing a course on digital innovation and digital disruption you know i mean i'm sure i don't need to explain how important the digital domain today is whether it's finance marketing or analytics and so shizuken university of japan is given us the second course this course in, is being taught by the boston consultancy groups digital practice head of japan so you are doing a course which is innovative you are doing a course which is contemporary you are being taught by one of the global leaders you know so you can imagine the learning process that you go through so when you're coming into soil you're not only learning you're learning from the best in the world you know there's another course that we do a course called future of capitalism our uh, one of our chairman uh, our chairman mr anil sarjeev does it it's a course which is taught across at least half a dozen global universities and students from those global universities come together and teach you know so when so the other advantage of a one year program is the global exposure so if you want to raise your game to the next level you need to have a global exposure today you know and that's very important and how best we can do it through our global tie up so shizuka university is one we have with mip in um, milan we have a johannesburg we have canada in canada that's how we help broaden your mindset so you know that's very important what also that we are doing is you know we are also giving you know uh, you an exposure in terms of a jump start in your future career So obviously when you're here you're looking for a, a growth in salary so our traditional you know uh, what our traditional research says that most people more than double the salary that's what our you know experience has been that whatever salary that you come you double your salary so uh, you know that's what happens and imagine in a in a period of one year if you can more than double your salary get knowledge get an international exposure i think that's a win win situation i mean you couldn't ask for anything more in a period of one year and one year also when you say one year it's generally you know it's about 11 months you know because by the time you join and then you get so uh, so that's how the one year program works for people you know who are with experience you know? that's 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 the basis genesis of what we are doing here placements are, i think you uh, i'm sure you would have gone to the website but the sweet spot for the you all are your joining or thinking about an mba when the economy is just becoming strong you know so the you know the covid today is is almost gone you know we you know we are far better prepared today than we were year and half ago the economy is booming so we are poised on the cusp of change and that is when you want to enter 
So, you know, you can benefit the most from it, from both of these. So I think placements, and we've already seen it this year. I mean, uh, I don't want to go get ahead of myself, but you look at consultancy companies, you look at IT companies, you look at BFSI companies, everybody wants to recruit, you know, because suddenly they've got demand coming in. And for the last two, three years, they were conservative and now they need people. And they need people with the right skill sets, the right exposure. And that's what we're trying to do here. So, I mean, I won't take much of your time. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. And I think so there have been some questions that have been coming in and we'd like to take some more questions if you have. Yeah, sure. I think uh, one of the questions is from Karthik, as I can see it here. He says, hi, could you let me know on, about how uh, not being AICT approved affects the PGPM program? So Karthik, uh, as I said, you know, uh, not being approved is a blessing in disguise for us. Uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, these kind of uh, regulatory uh, bodies can uh, have their own norms and their own restrictions on your curriculum and your style of functioning. But the way we launched the one-year program was uh, more for, uh, you know, being very innovative and being with the industry and its trends. So, therefore, we chose to go with the consortium of industry partners. Uh, so, we have 32 renowned global and multinationals who are in our consortium who constantly guide us on how the curriculum should be revamped every year uh, in line with the industry needs and their requirements and what is uh, you know going on latest uh, in in their world and uh, they also help us uh, sometimes with the projects internships case studies and you know guest lectures and some other things by coming into the classes uh, and therefore, it's a more uh, industry-led kind of a program rather than a regulatory-led program. And that gives us a lot of flexibility and a lot of uh, uh, ability to, you know, uh, go with the industry and uh, be contemporary there and industry-relevant because MBA is all about fitment into the industry. And uh, also, you know, uh, in terms of our admission criteria, therefore, there is... Uh, no, uh, no requirement of a uh, entrance exam for because we realize that people with uh, work experience sometimes don't have the time to plan for a cat mat. You know, for that you have to register in advance. You have to join coaching classes. You have to prepare months in advance and then take the exam and then, you know, based on that. But uh, we realize sometimes people just decide in the end. You know, they're working and they just realize that they're all stagnated. Like Gurveer said, you know, after graduation, you start working, you've done your engineering for two, three years, four years, you're in a technical job and you realize you're all stagnated after that. If you have to grow to a managerial level, you need an MBA, right? So, uh, and then what's the best possible option? Because most programs will ask you for an entrance exam. And for that, you have to prepare for at least one year and plan for that, but then, Soil does not require, and so even if you have decided in the last minute, uh, you know, we have our own in-house test, in-house process, and uh, we welcome uh, those students. So I would just like to add on to this. Uh, most one-year programs, like even the ISB, uh, are not AICT recognized, you know, because when you're talking of one year, I said, like I explained, nuances are very different. So most of them are non-AICT because uh, it helps you build your own curriculum. You know? And that is very important for people with experience, you know. And yes, yes. You, know, you are not, uh, you know, be teaching people in freshers in the traditional academic domain, you know. So I think, so it's actually a blessing in disguise not having an AIC Yes, and uh, okay, so the other question that we have here is... Uh, There's a question is the, hybrid classes. Is the course still a hybrid one? It is a hybrid one, but we have more than 60% of the batch uh, in Gurgaon, but, but we are following all COVID protocols and we encourage the students. I mean, obviously in these circumstances, we cannot force anyone, but uh, you know, the real learning happens on campus. You know, when you sit together, you exchange notes, you discuss after. So at least 60% of the batch is already in campus. And we expect more people to come in as things improve, you know, because Diwali was a, and people wanted to come after Diwali, but yes, we are continuing every class in a hybrid mode. Thank you. Uh, there are a couple of other questions here in the question and answer uh, box. Uh, one is from Srinath, which says, hello, my question is whether the HRs around the country understand 
the value of a one year program as we do in comparison to a two year program uh well of course i mean uh, srinath uh, i think uh, soil that way is blessed that we have a legacy of uh, more than three decades uh, you know in the world of hr because our founder and chairman is a very very celebrated global uh, personality in the world of hr who has done uh, many consulting assignments uh, with the, the top most leaders industry leaders uh in the world not just the country in the world and therefore you know we have a reputation uh in the world of hr uh and uh, that's why when this program was set up it, it was uh, we have uh, you know a lot of uh respect in that uh, separate program which we call hr leadership program and this is probably the one of the very few one year hr programs in the country especially in the northern side of this part of the world uh, of the country and uh, we are known for our very cutting edge curriculum in that program and some of the best hr leaders who come into the classes and groom and train the students uh, the students are also uh, you know uh, they also have the benefit of working on consulting assignments uh, which is our uh, you know uh, which is one of our division and therefore you know they get some live experience of that uh, that world and uh, our alumni is doing very well uh in that uh, field and therefore i can confidently say that yes uh, it is well recognized uh, in uh, most part of the industry so naresh has a question he says i am from a non engineering background and currently working as a drug safety analyst uh, most company prefer engineers so uh, naresh i like to say our group that we have we have a mix of academic backgrounds we have chartered accountants we have engineers we have people who are from uh, bcom english honors so it's a diverse group and, and and let me just go back to what i said most people here shift their career many people you know and companies are open to that today you know i mean i can give you an example of accenture recruiting people who don't even have a engineering or a consultancy background so so your skill sets are more important i like i said earlier what is the knowledge base and what are the skill sets that you have you may not be an engineer it's not the end of the world you know it's not the end of the world uh, so uh, you can be rest assured uh, that what your interests are how you build on those interests what is the knowledge base that you absorb and how well we uh, you will work along with us that's important that's it mm. and as to your point on preferring engineers while placement i think it is more for the it companies in the uh, it roles it related roles where some kind of so, you know engineering background may be preferred but nowadays you know uh, the recruiters are not confined only to that sector you have bfsi sector which is recruiting very uh, large and also the startup sector you know the the e-commerce uh, companies which are big recruiters big time recruiters and uh, therefore you know for a ba kind of role in an it company yes what you say is correct maybe the background of engineering is preferred there but in all other kinds of roles all other industries uh, there is no distinction made right uh, karthi has a question which says that uh, can people from non it background without any basic programming coding experience cope up with analytics specialization in pgpm what are the career prospects for such a candidate after completing pgpm will the previous experience be considered since it is not relevant to it and analytics thanks so uh, karthi a uh, lot of companies when they come for such lateral recruitments you know they have a base salary okay let me explain it to you and uh, if you have relevant experience they add on to that salary okay so it's not that you know Uh, uh, all companies some companies may ask for a background in it i am not saying because certain roles may be very specific but there is always an opportunity it's not that you know we have people analytics who now have a non it background also you know so uh, so you can choose you know you can take analytics and finance maybe look at financial analytics if you don't want to, you don't have an it non it background you know you could maybe look at supply chain analytics so analytics also has various sub domains you know and you could choose your sub domain and you could do marketing analytics also you know you know all this digital marketing marketing analytics so analytics doesn't mean you only need to have an it background you know it companies may take it but there are various opportunities you know financial analytics supply chain marketing analytics you know so there is always an opportunity so it's a big world out there you know so yeah and also like he says without any basic uh, 
uh, programming and coding experience op up yes definitely i mean this is a very standard question karti and uh, many people ask that and our analytics chair and professor dr das who's a very very uh, well experienced person in this field uh, so what what we always tell, and he tells them and we what we always tell them is that this is this experience is required only about 10 or 20% if you have it well and good if you don't have it then uh, it's really not very very uh, important uh, to be able to cope up because uh, you know even without this you can easily uh, learn and cope up with the specialization because the specialization in the course is much more than coding it is not confined to that so we have we had people non engineers also do it people with non coding experience also perform very brilliantly in the uh, cohort so that is not really a mandatory thing uh and like uh, of course hmm. yeah sorry yeah yeah. yeah yeah so aditya just asked does it provide international exposure are there any modules taken up at any other international institute so aditya i had mentioned that we have tie ups with the global university shizuken in japan is one where the students do some selected students do uh, two courses one is global strategy and uh, digital innovation and disruption both these courses are done with their students and obviously now they are uh, online uh, this thing courses and and that's where i gave the example of digital innovation is where it's taught by the the boston consultancy groups digital practice head for japan he's the one who's teaching them and our students some of our students are part of that uh, we have tie up with the other universities uh, uh, like milan university uh, we have tie ups with the iedc we have tie ups with uh, johannesburg business school and as and when opportunities come our students do take part in these uh modules or these courses uh, and they should suit your interest you know that's very important but yes you do get an opportunity so uh, sumit is saying that uh, is one year pgpm program offered by soil uh, lack something when compared to the mba program of another institute which occupies two years like most of the colleges take two years even for the work ex students how is overall curriculum accumulated to one year where other institutions take two years Uh, what's the consideration of one year hr pgpm in the industry also okay so first two versus one year i think i had briefly touched upon this part in my um, uh, initial opening uh, address and i had uh, mentioned that uh, because your people with work experience you are able to take that uh, rigor of the pace how we do it yes that's an interesting question uh, one we do not give any term breaks so in this one year we ask you not uh, to kind of uh, you know ha- go and for any marriages or any family functions not even for your own marriage right so uh, so we we avoid we avoid giving you any term breaks or any holidays we do give you breaks we do give you breathers we do give you you know uh, things to lighten you up but not in terms of long holidays uh, there is no break for internship like a two year program has for two months uh this is not it is done along with uh and also um you know we have a lot of uh, you know these uh, courses uh, which are on a rolling basis so for example you know it's not like in a semester system the course is going on for 6 months uh here the course will finish in 2 months time or even 1 and a half months time and uh, the next course will start after that so it goes on in a rolling basis uh and we avoid any time lags in between courses between terms or anything uh so that's the way we do it and secondly also like i said lot of learning can be fitted uh outside the class not everything has to be in a lecture mode uh we expect you to do lot of activities lot of research work participate in inter bee school competitions case study competitions quizzes and you know uh, sharpen your knowledge sharpen your exposure through some of those things uh, because learning is not just about knowing your marketing finance uh, hr it is also about how you can be confident and express yourselves well how you can articulate how you can research how can you work on projects and you know life projects and do some Uh, other things uh, which uh, many of the events help you do uh, we have our flagship inspired leadership conference students are participating presenting that they just hosted a cultural exchange program which is in can university where they interacted with the japanese students and they learned a lot about the global communities and how they function through that 
so uh, so the, i think uh, the world is changing fast it's no longer traditional classroom learning learning can come in any fashion it can be fun it can be outside the class and uh, that is how we try to do it here uh what is the consideration of one year hr so this i think we just answered uh, where, with karthi the same hr program uh karthi is also asked what will what will the difference in outsiders view the course completion certificate if you hold a one year pgpm without ac diplomas mm -hmm. and finally he wants to know if they are carelight studying in soil <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think uh, big chunk i would say a big chunk there's a whole section from south india and to the extent that one of the years they opened their own south indian cafe uh, in uh, in our canteen and we used to enjoy the filter coffees and the other things uh, that they would give us authentic ones so uh, every year i think a big chunk i would say at least about uh, 30% 20 30% of the class would come from there definitely Uh, and that adds a lot of diversity to the class uh, how you view the course completion i think um, see ultimately if the industry accepts it everybody accepts it and uh, because we have churned out alumni in large numbers who are holding very senior positions and niche roles so far uh, you know the industry has really recognized soil india very well and uh, that is a reason you know most of the top recruiters keep coming back to us for hiring uh, and uh, you know because we have made a mark there over the last many years so i don't think it really makes a difference in terms of your hiring and growth in the career uh, yes if you have to go for higher studies uh, let's say a phd or something then you will need a masters Uh, and in that case even a two year will not help you let me tell you because that is also not a masters degree a masters degree is something with the university that you have to do which qualifies you for a phd uh, but if you have to go abroad for a masters program or some other uh, program like many of our alumni have gone to chicago school or many other renowned b schools for further studies there uh, this uh, this certificate holds value so it doesn't make a difference whether you have a one year or two year there i hope i've answered that okay and aditya is asking what about product management as an elective yes we have product management as an elective uh, in uh, marketing we have multiple other electives advertising brands rural marketing marketing analytics consumer behavior so so there is a long list and product management is one of them so you can be rest assured there and uh, yeah marketing is a very popular uh, uh track with the as because you know it it holds that promise of glamour and change uh, you know from the boring technical side that people have been into into something which is more you know action oriented uh, and of course with the e-commerce companies coming up big time i think that has acquired a lot of prominence now i think uh, somebody says uh, in placements companies like mckinsey and company and microsoft came for brief period in last couple of years but no one was shortlisted how soil plans to help us to qualify these companies in the upcoming batch uh, yeah. uh, one thing uh, i just like to say here that uh, you know uh, uh maybe i am not see a lot of these companies come for very specific roles so i cannot mention a specific uh, re incident here but what i can say is that you know uh, there are a lot of these companies come every year you know like deloitte accenture uh, uh, you know infosys they come uh, and their their requirements keep changing you know so these requirements sometimes depend on very specific roles you know and sometimes they want people with those and they may not find someone with a specific role so this is neither a reflection on you on the company or the institute you know because when you're talking to mckinsey you're talking to microsoft uh, you know now if i would take a mckinsey mckinsey would maybe come for someone looking for a supply chain consultancy you know you're looking for supply chain logistics management consultancy now this is a very specific domain oriented role you know maybe they they couldn't find someone from that batch which year they came but having said that they keep coming with us so it's and it works the other way also you know many times you may go for a company and not get selected you know doesn't mean that you are bad you know it's just that maybe that role didn't suit you so i think this is part and parcel of it and this year we've had good companies like i said uh, we've got uh, companies across the industry that have been coming and they have been recruiting on a large scale so 
So I don't see anything. And we prepare ourselves students in many ways, you know, to generally answer questions by mentorships, by internal. So you have an internal fact mentor, you have an external mentor who's from the industry who will guide you. We conduct a lot of, uh, you know, mock interviews. We have simulations, we do case study, we teach you how to solve case studies. So there's a lot of these things. Many of your sessions are recorded. You could go through them to understand your weaknesses because you know when you see yourself speaking and recording on a recording, then you understand things. We do a lot of uh, aptitude tests. So it's a continuous process through which you will go through. You know? That's how it happens. Yeah, right? and I think uh, some of these companies have their own, uh, like uh, we said, have their own norms and their own uh, you know, uh, processes. But uh, having said that, many of our alumni uh, are working for the big four and the big three, you know, uh, you would notice that um, a good number of our alumni are in Pricewaterhouse and McKinsey, in uh, BCG, in uh, Grand Thornton, in many other consulting companies, uh, they are there. And uh, even, uh, you know, Microsoft or, uh, you know, the other uh, renowned companies they are uh, obviously they're working all of them are, are there so it's 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 just that their campus placement policies may be very different from the lateral hiring ones you know what they take from the market so the once the alumni has acquired that kind of skill set you know they're able to position themselves with these companies and for these roles much better uh, and these companies obviously don't make a distinction whether you come from uh, soil or you come from anywhere else at that point of time it's just a question of your skill set uh, microsoft specifically we did have a collaboration with them in fact microsoft we have a very close relationship with them because uh, you know we developed our analytics and digital track along with them uh, you know analytics was developed about six years back and it was launched along with Microsoft. And uh, last year, we even had a partnership with my, we were, in fact, we were the second school in the country after ISB Hyderabad. That was the only uh, business school they had tied up with in the country. And then it was soil. So we were the second uh, school in the country who they chose to have a partnership with because they, uh, you know, liked our curriculum so much. And uh, they gave, uh, you know, so they gave almost 100 hours of training. Uh, on Microsoft courses and platforms to our students. And uh, they even gave certificates uh, to these people and uh, which, which added a lot of value to their resumes. So, uh, so they do come up, they do come, they come in, in partnership in other forms, not necessarily for hiring from the campus itself. Uh, that is one. And uh, how soil plans to help us? Okay, so this Gurveer has answered, I think, right? And of course, yeah, the placement preparation is very rigorous here. It's, I mean, any B school you would go in, especially soil, because we have only one year. So we focus a lot on your learning, conceptual understanding, and placement preparation. So both the things will simultaneously uh, go on, uh, because you know, you when you join in May and around uh, October, November, the companies start coming for hiring. So you have only about six to eight months you know, to kind of really uh, prepare you well. And uh, like Gurveer said, uh, some of the students uh, who work very hard are very perseverant, uh, manage to bag uh, very lucrative offers. For example, a uh, student here who was, uh, he, he got a jump of almost four times in his previous drawing, CTC, you know, so he was drawing about four lakhs when he joined and he's at 16 lakhs. He was, he was selected for a role. Uh, at that at that thing because he was always taking initiative he was very very sincere always taking a lot of interest in learning developing himself so uh, and likewise uh, another student who had a average background but again very sincere and honest was the first one to be placed so uh, i think it all depends upon uh, a lot depends on you as well because uh, soil provides a great ecosystem a great platform you can I think we are one of the few ones uh, who, uh, you know, uh, almost 100% of the alumni will vouch that we, we provide the best learning experience. Uh, we have the best faculty and the best uh, resources who are very, very committed to work with you 24-7. Uh, so I, I don't think any other school uh, people take that much interest, faculty takes that much interest in your personal development as in soil because our whole philosophy is based on uh, mentoring and development. So each student is 
allotted a mentor from the faculty. They're also allotted a mentor from the industry, a senior professional who will handhold your journey. So, you know, that kind of uh, benefit very few schools provide. And uh, that ensures that you are able to develop yourselves well and prepare yourselves well, uh, not just for a job from the campus, but for lifelong career growth. You know, that is very, very important, how you grow in life. It's not just a question of one job from the campus. It's how you sensitize and develop yourselves uh, and equip yourselves to develop in the long term. And that is what we set out the roadmap for. I think Karthi wants to know that he's got 10 years of experience in India and abroad mm -hmm. in project management in oil and gas. And he's interested in PGPM analytics, but he's worried if his previous experience would be considered by companies, uh, whether it, because it's not relevant to analytics or IT. Yeah, I think uh, what you're saying is you have a uh, 10 year experience. I'm interested in analytics would be. No, I think it, it will be covered. I mean, uh, you have a project management and if you take up an analytics specialization and develop yourselves in that area, then definitely it's, it, it's, uh, it's pretty relevant and a good treatment. Uh, however, uh, 10 years work experience, maybe a slightly longish time period uh, from the average of the class because the average of the class is about three to four years. And uh, like we say, the sweet spot for companies on the campus hiring is about five years. Uh, beyond seven to eight years of work experience, there are lateral opportunities which are sourced for you. That means one-on-one -on -one from the market rather than a campus pool hiring, you know. So, uh, and project management, of course, is a skill set which is, which is high in demand, you know. And when you combine it with analytics, I think it really creates a lot of value. And many of our alumni with that combination is doing very well in the industry. So we can connect you with some of them and you can have a chat. With some alumni who can also better guide you and that will be, you know, they can give you a career path also. That will be good for you. Yeah. You like. uh, sure. I think Karthik is asked that I was going to the website and noticed AICT being mentioned under extraditions list. Could, so I think Karthik, let me tell you, we have two campuses here. We have a campus in Manesar and we have a campus in Gurgaon. So the one-year program is run from the campus in Gurgaon. Uh, the campus in Manesar is where we have a two-year program. The two-year program is AICT approved. I think that is what you would have read, AICT being mentioned on the accreditations list. So we have two separate campuses with two separate programs. And I think you have read about the, the Manesar campus and the two-year program. So that's separate. Yeah. So the, so the AICT is referring to the two-year program. Two year program. Yeah, that's a separate program and that's a separate campus that we have in Manis. So different. I don't know if there are more questions, but I think uh, one one area also, uh, like Gurveer mentioned about the one year program, uh, was a was the was the part about the uh, being financially and uh, you know uh, making making it more sense uh, because if people are with work experience, you know you don't want to spend uh, two years, uh, invest two years of your life and uh, into a program and take a career break there because there's an opportunity cost involved to that extra one year. So for example, if uh, 14 lakhs is the fee and if you start working one year earlier at let's say an average of nine lakhs, uh, the net fee cost to you is only five lakhs, uh, 14 minus nine, because you, know, you have saved that one year and you're working one year earlier and you're drawing nine lakhs extra for that one year, which you would not have had you been in the two-year program. So uh, so that way it becomes very, very cost-effective. Uh, and uh, let's say, you know, within that one year, like we said, uh, on, an, on an average, people are drawing twice their previous drawn CTC. Uh, on an average, of course, some people would have about 80%. Some people even have four times, like I gave you that example just now. So uh, so that is what it happens. And uh, uh, finally, if you notice at the fees also, it is one of the most cost-effective programs in the country. Uh, we have uh, kept the fee amount uh, very nominal as compared to any other one-year program uh, in the country. And therefore, you know, it's, it's, it's also cost-effective from that point of view. Uh, so, if there are any other questions. Yeah, there is a question from Sumit. He says, I have three years of work experience in HR domain. Uh, can you please highlight 
most common job profiles offered by companies in your HR uh, program? Yes, so all uh, so in in HR we get all kinds of uh, profiles, whether it is the profile of a generalist or of a specialist, in uh, any of the areas of training and development, or in uh, recruitments, or in uh, you know uh, any of those other areas, or like a HR business partner role. Uh, that may happen. But lately, what we are noticing is that a lot of these roles are coming in the HR tech area, you know, the digital and the analytics area. Uh, so I think just like any other domain, HR is also fast moving uh, to getting more analytical savvy and more digitally savvy. And big companies, as you know, uh, use a lot of uh, AI and uh, algorithms uh, for their HR processes. So therefore, students are expected to be very savvy in those areas. And that's why the HR curriculum has also uh, been made very contemporary with uh, digital workplaces and uh, AI-enabled uh, processes and uh, HR analytics as a big chunk of the curriculum. And uh, what we are noticing is many of the people with engineering background are preferring to go to HR. Uh, mainly because of that uh, strong combination which the industry is looking for. Okay, so Karthik has a question. Uh, when does the PGPM course commence? Uh, Karthik, that is in May. Uh, I think May is uh, when we begin the course. Also, is there any web page where I can see the previous year placement reports? Could only find the latest one. Yes, I think our admission team can help you do that. I think website has some limitations that you cannot have too much of data. And we don't want to put only placement data. We don't want to make that a centerpiece because uh, we believe learning is the main objective of any education institute. And placement is just a consequence of that. Uh, and therefore, you know, the earlier years placement reports, definitely we can uh, help uh, provide to you. Uh, if you can contact any of our admission team members, uh, you know, either Shobhesh or Kevin or uh, any others, then we can help you with that. Oh, I think they've, they've already given you the details. You can call on those numbers and you can ask and we'd be more than happy to send you across the details. Yeah. You can also talk to our alumni. You can talk to our current batch students and, you know, explore and understand more about it. And you're, if anyone is in Gurgaon, you're more than welcome to visit a campus. Yes. We would love to have you meet us in person. And if you have any queries, we will be more than happy to answer them right there. Himani has a question here now. I have my graduation in 2020 and I'm a fresher. I have no work experience. So am I eligible or not for the program? So Himani, uh, while uh, basically we take people with prior work experience in PGPM, uh, in the HRLP program, sometimes we do allow some freshers, but people with very outstanding background and uh, profile. Uh, because, you know, uh, in HR, uh, we've noticed that the industry welcomes uh, some people uh, who are freshers and, uh, you know, have that HR skill set also there. So uh, that is why in that program, we have, we do allow some of them. But like I said, uh, an exception. Who are except, uh, uh, exception yeah. and with outstanding profile and uh, personalities. So you can definitely uh, send in your CV uh, for us to assess. And then uh, if the program chair feels that you are a right fitment, she can allow an exception. Good. So I think we've had a lot of questions. I think it was a very interesting webinar. We thoroughly enjoyed uh, talking to all of you. I think we covered a lot of aspects. If there's some things that we missed out, uh, you can always approach us and we are always ready to talk to you uh, and help uh, you find your right calling in life. So maybe we can close it here, Gurbir, or there's uh, any yes, last? There are no more questions. Uh, we can close it here. Thank you all for coming and uh, attending and look forward to having you all on campus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck. Good night. Bye.